so yeah, um, I guess we'll just get started with a little bit of back view on OCML itself and how it got started and everything and just general yeah. stuff like that. concert goer um, and long story short I'm you know, trying not to make it too long um, I have a felony on my record for selling drugs on the kid, and I was not able to get a job so I started a clothing company and I was selling clothes um, on the back patio of a uh, like a drum and bass like DJ night and uh, that led me to be like hey I want to put bands on this stage and so as soon as I started booking shows, I found out, you know, all the kind of the back stuff and what bands didn't like and what they liked. And then I found out about the whole data play thing. And that just blew my mind. Uh, and I couldn't wrap my head around how that was like a thing. Yeah. Um, and so we, we kind of like kind of went to war against data play in a sense. Um, because there's so many amazing, talented people, especially living here in Orange County and Southern California between, you know, San Diego, LA, like there's, so many bands that are so good that, um, that you know, there, there doesn't need to be a, like a pay-to-play climate in a sense. Um, and again, it's Orange County, and so a lot of people just want what they want, and they want it now because they think they're entitled to it. So it's like a double-edged sword. But um, basically, we just started. We started with a weekly event on a Tuesday night at a bar. Uh, it was free, and uh, we did that for like two years, and... Uh, Booked a bunch of good bands, tried to put on a solid show, even though it was a busy show. Um, and uh, we, I mean, it, it took off from there to where like all these other venues saw what we were doing, and then they would start hitting us up to book shows at their spot as well. Um, but my business partner uh, Kevin Martin and I had known each other for a long time, and he'd been doing a festival, and I'd just been doing some random shows, and we. Uh, you know, like every good decision, over over a couple cocktails at the bar, I decided you know, we need to like try to be like on the artist side, like yeah, yeah, definitely. Not necessarily like a music union, but like just like getting everybody on the same page because it, bands that are on a local level don't need to be competing with each other; they need to be helping each other. And it didn't seem like that just wasn't really happening the way that it should have happened. Um, and so, I mean, we've definitely made a positive effect on that. And, and that uh, we're going to continue to keep doing it. Yeah, I've definitely seen a lot of your guys' events just everywhere around social media. You guys are definitely great at marketing and getting it out there, um, which that that's something I'm really impressed by. Yeah, well, I, uh, I'm glad that uh, other people notice because it's just a lot of work. And yeah, then, yeah. Sometimes it feels like nobody notices, you know, like, kind of like all these local bands feel like it. Sometimes it feels like nobody's listening, but you got to play your heart out because one of those two guys in the in the room could be the one that makes or breaks your career. And, you know, and, and that's kind of something that we've really harnessed and taken to every show that we do, whether it's at the House of Blues or whether it's at the Dive Bar Um, You know, play your heart out and put on a good show. And we do our best to make sure that the bands don't have to worry about a bunch of other things as well. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you know, there's, there's so many talented people that never get discovered just because people don't give attention to people they don't already know it's a really weird conundrum yeah yeah it definitely is i noticed that um just because a band isn't at a level that they think at like a certain level they'll just excuse them or stuff like that it's kind of it's weird yeah and it's just like in, in a sense i understand it but it's dumb um they're just starting out. Like every yeah. band that you've ever seen on a huge stage was one of these guys at some point. And so if nobody pays attention to me, like how are we going to have, you know, your next Metallica or Incubus or exactly. you know, Lincoln Park or these huge bands? Like how are you going to do that if we don't help them get there? So, I mean, that's really like at the bottom of it where OCML came from and where the vision came from. It's really to like, help artists be artists instead of having to worry so much about the business and getting screwed over but yeah the, especially like i don't know how it is down south but i know up here um you've got to be like competitive about it um, yeah. and work together yeah, with the other bands yeah. too yeah it's it's uh it's a weird i mean i grew up I mean, you know everybody knows chain reaction and yeah. i grew up going to 
do shows at Chain Reaction multiple times a week. And uh, they used to be awesome. They were like the best. And now, in my opinion, they're not as great. And it's because they've like fully adopted the pay-to-play model. And like the good bands don't do pay-to-play shows. You know, like people who know what they're worth and like that know they can bring 50 people, like why would they do it? So the shows just aren't as good. And that's sending a bad man, a bad repertoire, uh, if you will, of all of local music because people are paying to get into these shows and then they see this band that's like, meh. And, uh, you know, they think that represents everybody, but realistically, all the good bands aren't playing those shows, you know? Yeah, yeah. They're playing shows and they're getting paid at. So it's, it, it, it's weird, but, you know, you got to think about the, uh, you got to think about the person who's paying for the ticket to get in, you know? Yeah, uh, that's so much the band of the venue. True. Yeah, just, I think. Yeah, that was bad. Yep. So, yeah, uh, I, I think... But, um, Yeah, yeah, I'm actually, I recently got out of the one man that I was playing in called Creekside, but um, now I'm just kind of doing more of a, we're just kind of taking our time with it, jamming more, doing more like improvisations and stuff like that. Um, it's a definitely more of a laid back feel compared to what I've been doing, but um, I think we're trying to go on a tour at some point in the near future. What's your experience uh, with pay-to-play as being an artist in the band? So, last, uh, I think it was the tour that we were on, um, Creekside was on, that you booked us in Santa Ana at the downtown market. The show before that, we played in L.A., and I, that one was definitely pay-to-play because we had to, it was just a bar, I think it was Molly Malone's or something. Um, okay. And we had to leave as soon as the show was over because none of us were over 21 and we pretty much sold to just family and stuff and hoped we could make the minimum amount they wanted. Yeah, you know, I just, it, it, I, I feel like those, like, even if, sometimes the data play event is still a good show, like, yeah, but most of the time, like, it, it, it just seems like the ask to be that doesn't need to happen. Like, uh, uh, I see people do, I mean, again, like, uh, I just do things differently, but, like, I see people do House of Blues shows where they're pay to play, and, like, they're half empty, and do a show where I pay my bands and I sell out. Yeah. Like, I, you know, people aren't looking, you know, like, in the longevity of this, like, people don't want to do half empty shows. They don't want to pay that, you know? So, it's almost, it's almost shooting yourself in the foot to take one of those, but, anyway. Yeah. Move on from the data play. <laughs> More music. I can talk about that <laughs> Yeah, so besides events, you guys also recently just got into being a record la- or having a branch as a record label. Um, yeah. yeah. And how's that been, basically? Just kind of, you know, that, that like, just kind of happened as the natural progression of, uh, you know, doing everything that we already do for band. Uh-huh. Um, I managed a band. Uh, for like a year and a half and that kind of led us to starting a record label. I don't manage that band anymore. Um, I figured out that I don't really want to be a manager or yeah. be a producer. But um, basically being there to help a bunch of other bands out uh, and, and get people where they're trying to go is uh, um, it, it's again, I get a lot of bands like, you know, all these independent bands. So the record label thing is, like, out the window, right? Like, mm-hmm. there's not, like, a record label that's, like, going to sign you that has an advance for you. Like, this is not a thing anymore because the music itself isn't actually making a monetary um, return. So they can't invest. And so basically what we did, we're, we're just a digital record label. Our record label doesn't cover the physical aspects of, of the bands. That's all still them. And we've trained them to be, you know, business and, and, uh, and we run that as a business versus... Uh, Oh, and then the second is getting them to be on the same team as other bands. Uh, because again, like you know, going back to in the beginning of it, too many people are competing with each other that should be working together. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's a small market. It's it's not something like you know, you're not competing. With if if every local band went to two shows a month that they weren't playing, like every local scene would be better immediately. And totally. That's kind of and that's kind of like. 
I guess the macro vision of why well, I see my record too. And people are and then these bands are paying fifty dollars to get on um, you know, on TuneCore for their album every year and they're not even making fifty dollars off their album on the internet because they're just the only ones promoting it. So for us we decided to, you know, put it together and get a group of bands that are already doing stuff to promote each other in because they're on the same team, like, you know, quote unquote team. Um, which everybody should be on the same team. You shouldn't have to be a part of us <laughs> yeah. to get that. But, you know, again, Orange County is a, a fickle thing to deal with. But, um, yeah, it, the, the record label, um, you know, we have the, doing 40 different, I uh, guess, like on Google, it's on Amazon, it's on iTunes, it's on Spotify, it's on all the, all the major stuff that anybody would really listen to music on. Um, and what we do when we bring in a band is you know, we'll do a photo shoot with them um, so that we have good promo and then we'll handle a lot of their marketing and their advertising for the releases. Um, but other than that, we're trying to coach them and build them to be a self-sustaining business, you know. And, uh, a lot of, one thing that's always bothered me about the local music scene is every town has their like DIY thing mm-hmm. and like we're, we're doing DIY but like in my opinion the right way of course they oh, yeah. probably say the same thing but um, they like DIY means kind of like fuck everybody else and like a lot of the DIY kids at least around here like they're like not into business and they just think that they should be able to play and do whatever they want. And, like, that's just not how this works. No, like, you're no. a band, which means you are a business. And if you don't run yourself like that, like, you're not going to get where you want to go. Like, I can promise that. And so that's basically why we started the record label. Um, was just to get people a little bit, and you know, just to get some of the bands we've been working with for the past couple years a little bit closer. So that we could help them build a team because every band needs a team behind them, you know? Oh, definitely. So, I mean, I'm really excited about that. Like, uh, I had, uh, I mean, we have three bands that came to us and said, hey, we want to sign with you. But I would have never even reached out to you because I thought that they would just wanted to be with us. So, obviously, we've been doing something that people are enjoying There's... to get to that point. But, um,. It's really about building the team and getting people to people that are on the same level to be on the same page, basically. Yeah. Like, you know, we're, we're all on this together. And if there's nobody at show A, show B suffers because of it. Because like the three people that went to show A aren't going to go to show B because they think that you know it doesn't matter who's throwing it, doesn't matter what it is. Like the outside people have the perspective of everything. Yeah, yeah, you know, the, yeah. the outside people have the perspective of everything. Um, they come in and they see nobody there. They're like, oh, that's every show. Like, and that's just you know, it's just human behavior. Which, that's how it is. Yeah. You know, and, and again, like, there's so many good local bands. Like, it just blows my mind that you know the climate has come to where it is. But um. You know, I, again, like the record label thing was just a, a it, it was a, a logical branch off for us in, uh, in order to continue to do what we we're trying to do here and help artists. So, Yeah, I definitely noticed like the similarity between your kind of more grass, I would call it more like a grassroots movement for like the start of OCML, just kind of booking band, local bands that don't get enough recognition and then now starting the record label and getting other local yeah. bands to like kind of team up and work together in order to make the scene more thriving. Yeah. Well, again, and that's like, that's like the one thing that I'll always like, uh, quote unquote, preach. Like, you need to work together. Like, you're all on the same level. Like, yeah. like it, the entitlement and the, I'm like a rock star. Like, no, you're not. And, like, we all want to be, I get it. Like, you should act like it to an extent, but you're on the same level as the, like, the metal band is on the same level as the country band, and they should be friends. Like, yeah. and, and, I, and I take a page out of like, you know, um, the music history of Orange County. Like, there was, like, The Offspring and No Doubt and, like, a, a, another, like, a couple other, like, handful of bands. But they didn't sound like each other. They never played together. But they were all at each other's shows. And that's, like, the unity of the music in its entirety. You know, like, the, when you can have 
hip hop people at rock shows and vice versa because they're they're a part of it. It's like it's the same thing, you know. That's kind of why uh, up here in Chico, we definitely have. I've been at shows where I'll notice like a rapper. Or, a folk artist or something like that might be at a metal show or even just like the school oriented like jazz stuff there might be students at a house show or something like that which i feel like smaller cities are gravitate more towards that i guess but then uh i guess i just i don't know smaller scenes yeah you know i i just hate the competition honestly yeah. like obviously like again like for business it's like there's a, actually, like, it's kind of random, but my dad's been working for this company, uh, flying all over the world, and his title was Vice President of Strategic Alliances, which is basically him making partnerships with other businesses. Yeah. And that's literally what every band should do. Like, make strategic alliances with other bands that are doing the same thing as you. And then do work, you know, and I, just, I feel like a lot of people don't do that, and they think that their shit doesn't stink, and uh, yeah. <laughs> that they're the best, but I mean, you wouldn't be in that situation if you were the best, so, you know, get off the high horse, and be a part of the team, you know. But yeah, um, so besides all that, um, I noticed you guys also are still doing the reamp sessions, which are really good as well, I checked out the one last week, um, I think it was the Mox party. I don't even remember how to say his name, but that one was really yeah. Yeah, dude, I love that guy. Uh, it's not every he's a, a, for me. He's an acquired taste. Not everybody in like some people are like, like what? But I love yeah. that guy. Um, he's a front man in a hard rock band, but then he plays those like killer acoustic songs too. Nice. Um, but anyway, um, move on. He's, the band he's in is uh, against uh, no, wait, Avenue of the Sun. Um, but, uh, anyways, I love doing those VM sessions because it gives, like, a different vibe to, like, gives a different vibe to the music that we are recording. Um, yeah. The, most of the stuff that we are recording is usually, like, or at least the musician is usually, like, in a real, like, a full band, a real, right, in a full band, and then they're doing this, like, solo acoustic thing, so it's a lot more intimate. Mm-hmm. Um... And I, I mean, I personally love those. Um, we're probably going to be switching to a different studio than Ram, but we're going to continue to do those videos. Nice. Yeah, I always look forward to seeing those. And then, as well, the podcast. I feel like that has a lot of just good, useful tips for new and upcoming bands and even just bands that have been around for a while that want to, like, change up their, yeah. how they do well, things. And that's, and that's fair. I'm glad that you said that because that's like the point of the podcast. It's like, if this isn't just for beginners, this is for people who are jaded by the fact that they think that they know everything too. You yeah. know, they've been through it. Like, and, and that's why we do the, every fourth episode, we do the rants and raves. Um, yeah. And you know, this, this comes out every Monday. So um, actually the next time that we go into record, we're going to be recording our one year anniversary show. Like nice. having this every Monday podcast, which is crazy to think about. Because Every we Monday. Had an opportunity and I took it, you know, but every single Monday, like on, it's on iTunes, it's on everywhere you can get a podcast, um, you know, and we just try to give you tips, we try to give, you know, we try to give advice, and it, all of that isn't like textbook shit, it's all from experience. Like everything yeah. that we talk about is stuff that we have learned by doing it. It's not something that we like know and we're preaching, and that's why I think it's really valuable. Is sometimes you don't understand why somebody does something, and that's kind of basically what the podcast is trying to do: is, is describe why you know a promoter or then you're a band does what they do. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's just every Monday, and I'm, I'm like, the next couple of episodes are going to be really good. Like we we recorded probably the best four episodes um, last Thursday that we've ever done so the next the next month of the OCML podcast is going to be straight fire I'm stoked on it uh, and you know again it's just great. there's a lot of people that try to provide the same value that we do but they try to charge you for it like I'll take this class or do this or I want everybody to succeed like the, the better the bands do the better that we do you know so yeah. it, it, I'm not trying to charge anybody for it I want you to actually listen to it though <laughs> and that's yeah. 
that's, again, why I'm not trying to charge you. I, 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 yeah, maybe if you buy it, you listen to it more, but I want everybody to like, have the opportunity to... Because a lot of the information, especially on that podcast that we give, like, yeah, it's like relevant primarily to bands, but it's relevant to any business. And it's relevant to anything like, that you're doing, like just life. Like, yeah, yeah. If you don't learn something after listening to a couple of my podcasts, you can call me and keep it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, kind of the point. I even took some notes from like, I listened to the one last week, which went over like, how to engage your fan base over social media and just in general, and then why you shouldn't be expecting results right away. And I feel like that the expecting results right away is something everybody tends to do at some point. So I feel like even in just life, that's a good tip. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like, I, you know, we, we talk about things that we already all, all of us already know this. We just don't think about it in yeah. the way that, and that's, that's kind of like why I love being able to do the podcast. Like, yeah, I, we, we tell you how it is and you know how it is, but we're telling you like and you're hearing it and then you're like, Oh shit, that makes sense. Like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. And that that's fun. I, I mean for me that's fun because I like seeing light bulbs go off people's heads. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. And then um I guess it's the last little bit I wanted to touch on because I've been seeing your guys' uh work with like the homeless and moving them from the river bank and stuff like that. Um you just want to discuss what you guys are doing with that, um, and then the porter potties as well. Yeah, dude, I'm glad that you brought that up. Um, uh, I was actually for the past two months homeless myself, and it's not because of anything except my house caught on fire from yeah, an electrical that. fire, and so like you know I'm like couch surfing and things like that. I, and that to me is like a staple of like people don't understand what makes people homeless, like. Stuff like that, like that happened to me. Could like somebody could be homeless for a year after that, just because like the, you you lose yourself when you don't have your spot, you know? Yeah, like, exactly. But anyway, I I have been homeless before actually, uh, hmm. and uh, we had an office in downtown Santa Ana for two years. We just got rid of it last month. Actually, the first of this month was the first day we went in there. But uh, we started to see, you know, we're in the downtown. We expect to have a few homeless. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Santa is not a big city, but I noticed there's just an increasing number of homeless. And so, like, I would say three years ago, we went out just, like, me and two guys, like, that weren't, uh, not I was seeing about guys, just me and two people I know went out, and we cooked the whole Thanksgiving dinner, and went and kind of stood on one side of the street and gave it to the homeless. Um, and when I did that, we went kind of closer to where the, the encampment was at and realized how bad the problem was. It wasn't just the 10 to 12 people that I'd seen in downtown. There was literally a thousand fucking people, yeah. like, homeless in the civic center of Santa Ana, like, where the court is and where, where yeah. all of the city, like, all of the elected officials go to work and pass, like, camps and, and all this shit every day, and nothing happens. And it, 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 it bothered me on a level that I immediately was like, yo, like, we... Well, art, like, and the thing is, artists don't understand how powerful they are. Oh, yeah. Well, when it comes to society, and when it comes to, like, social stigmas, like, whatever artist drops the quickest song about what happened in Virginia, it's going to go viral. You yeah. Know? And, like, nobody understands the power that an artist has to shape people's perspectives um, until you're in that situation. So I actually co-founded a group, which is completely separate from the CML, uh, called Artists United to End Homelessness. And our, our goal is inspiring artists to make social impact, basically. Nice. Uh, obviously, to end homelessness. But in my opinion, I don't really think that's possible in this uh, in this climate. Like, in this 2017, yeah. like, I, I just don't think that we can actually get it. We're, we're, we're coming to the era of a lot of end of work. Yeah, like the, you know, the jobs are being replaced by machines. Um, there's even a bunch of apps out there that are trying to replace my job as a promoter. Like, oh, yeah. look at your gig. Like, no, you won't. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but basically, we we had a really good, uh, really good response from a lot of a lot of artists. Um, and they would come out and we started doing a, a monthly like 
clothing drive event where you know you bring food, you bring clothes, and you donate it. Um, and that generated a lot of buzz, but it got to the point where it felt it started to feel hollow just going out and giving these people clothes and food and then leaving. And so I took more of a backseat approach now recently to actually go to like the board of supervisors meeting, city council meetings and like try to do that. Yeah. Um, and so what that, in, and what that ended up entailing is we raised a thousand dollars from a bunch of broke local musicians in three days. Damn. Like not even seventy two hours. We raised a thousand dollars and we bought we bought two porta potties, like straight out. And nice. we put them down at the riverbed because there's a thousand people living down there. Yeah. Um and uh it, it, it's like they're they're pissing and defecating and, and doing all that in the riverbed, which when there's rain it goes to the ocean. Like that's unsafe for everybody in the county. Exactly. For some yeah. reason there's just a bunch of dumb people here that don't understand that like this is still going to affect them and so they don't do anything about it and uh, I don't like to talk and like try to come to a conclusion with people who aren't going to listen so we just bought these porta potties and we put them down there and like dude it got picked up by every news outlet in California nice like <laughs> And like and from LA all the way to Mexico, like even Telemundo can. Like every news outlet came and covered the story of like activists put porta potties, and then and then the city took them. Wow! Like, it's, it's, it's what we planned on. Like we did it on purpose. Yeah. Like we knew the city was going to take them, and that was kind of the move, so that everybody would now know. Oh wow, the city doesn't even want them to have a place to shit. They'd rather <laughs> the shit get floated into the ocean than you swim it. And so it's, it's, it's further trying to make them look bad. But anyway, music and art have uh, like a moral, like not moral, but they have a place in society that is very unique. And a lot of people can't touch on that, uh, except if you're an artist. Like, there's things that you can say in a song that you can't say in a conversation, you know? And yeah. That's the power that we want artists to know that they have, and I also want them to use that for something positive and like positively affect change instead of you know just man. Yeah. Like, oh, I wrote a song. Like check it out. Like write a song for a reason, and like it will connect with a lot of people. Again, I'm not uh, I, at the same time. I'm not here to tell people what to write, but there's so much going on, especially right now with like hate and violence all of that goes out the window when music brings people together like oh yeah and that's like a main reason of why like we went so hard to try to help them one the issue is blown out of proportion from the wrong side and people don't really understand that like literally anybody could become homeless and as long as there are homeless people no one is safe from being homeless and I, that's like that's one of the things that are artists united and homelessness that we say as long as there are homeless people all of us are on the brink of being homeless because within the next 20 years every job's going to be automated yeah like that's true like we're, we're, we're seeing that we're seeing the beginning effects of it now but every job is going to be automated like computers are going to do the work that people used to do now what do you do with all those people that now aren't earning an income yeah I mean uh, kind of like yeah you know it's, it's a it's a really heavy subject because i don't have the answer either you know i'm trying to figure it out but yeah it's um, not something you can I just really fix right away and, and so does the rest of my team that um music and art has i guess for me at least maybe not the rest of my team music and art has a moral obligation to guide people in the right direction in my opinion i agree and um they also have the power to do that. <laughs> they have the microphone. Like, exactly. there, there, there's nobody else that has a better platform to do that. So um, I really try to push my artists to do something for other people too. You know, again, it's, don't be selfish. Like, you're a great band and all, but if you do something for other people, now you become like legendary. I have to say. Like, I went to Incubus last night at the Hollywood Bowl, and on the way in, there was volunteers that we're working for a foundation, the Illumination Foundation, which is actually started by Incubus. Nice. So, you know, and, and I didn't know that, so I met these people. But that kind of, for me, 
proves my point. Like, music is here to make a positive impact. And, uh, well, it, it may not be here for that, but it can. Yes, it can. And yeah. if you want to be a successful musician, especially in a 2017 climate, you have to do that. Yeah, you can't just... Uh, like, you, yeah. you, you, you can't just play good music and expect to make it because you don't make money off music anymore. So, like, you have to play good music, so then you have to put on a killer live show. But the second that you add something where you're giving back to the community, or you do, like, everything changes for you. And uh, that's one thing I want to instill in every band's mind is go volunteer at the old folks home. Like, it, it, you know, like, just do something and, and get involved. And one, you'll feel great about it, but two, it'll, it'll fucking change other people's lives, and then they'll remember you because of it. Yeah, exactly. Even if you don't personally know it. Yeah. And yeah. Well, and again, like, just a, I guess a closing statement on the homeless thing is like, again, like, that, that quote, like, as long as there are homeless people, all of us are susceptible to being becoming homeless. And there are six, I want to say six times more empty houses in the U.S. than there are homeless people. So it's, it's not like there's not somewhere for them to go. It's that our system is is failing and changing, and we need to we need to update it. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, it should happen. <laughs> but yeah. we, you know, we, we, need to, we need to try to be ahead of it instead of be behind it. Yeah, I mean, even like recently, it was a, two months ago or so, a water heater caught fire in my house or my apartment complex. So like. That, that like 20 minutes or so I was like just reevaluating like what the hell I was going to do if I actually was out of a home yeah and 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 you're not lazy you're not a bum it's not like you don't have a job it's like and, and that's what everybody thinks that every homeless person is just lazy he doesn't have a job is a slob and the people that we help out down in the riverbed like I, I one of my one of my good friends like from the riverbed she has two jobs but she works retail and uh I'm going to get a little political and I shouldn't, but everybody praises Obamacare, but she doesn't have a full-time job because of Obamacare Damn. because the, the company has to pay more for that. So then she has to have two bullshit part-time jobs that literally can't even afford, like for her to like eat comfortably. And just, she's got money. Like she's got more money than I do because I pay rent, <laughs> <It's> like, <Yeah. laughs> but she's not trying to like buy a lot, you know, live in some tiny little one bedroom apartment. Oh, yeah. And spend all of her money on it. And, and, like, so, there's a lot of other issues, obviously, that go into it. There's people that are homeless because they're mentally ill. There's people that are homeless because they're drug addicts. There's people mm-hmm. that are homeless because they're fucking house got fire. There's people that are, like, it, it, it's not a one-trick pony, and everybody tries to make it out to be, for the most part, at least the public, and, like, when they attack the homeless. And, like, everybody's perspective changes when their house gets on fire. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I, when you have to like live somewhere that's not yours because something happens that was out of your control, which happens to a lot of fucking people. Oh yeah. You become homeless. Like you don't, you don't, you shouldn't get categorized as that. You know, and and again, like, I, like I was saying earlier, jobs are disappearing. Like jobs are being replaced by fucking computers. Exactly. Yeah. That's not gonna go away. There's no way to combat that. It's gonna happen. So yeah. We have to adjust and change the shit up. So. But anyway, like that and pay the player two things I could talk forever about. <laughs> there's, not, there's not a fucking end on the horizon, so. <laughs> right. All right, well, yeah, I guess we'll just end it here because it's been around 30 minutes. All right, dude, well, hey, I appreciate it. It's been a, been a fun conversation. All right, so. yeah, yeah, it's been cool. Um, Well, 